Uh, okay, here we are back on the internet. It's a good okay, uh, Doris, how would Lincoln have handled today's Republican Party? Well, first of all, I must say, I always hate it when Republicans go, we're the party of Lincoln. Uh. Parties change their whole dynamic. Sometimes it completely flips. They should, be, they should be forced to drop that we're the party of Lincoln. That's not at all the same party, right? No, it is not the same party, but I must say, just listening to you tonight, it made me so good after this acrimonious week to laugh tonight. I mean, it's really important to have that <laughs> it sense. Is. Lincoln used to say, the way you whistle off sadness is through humor. He was able to tell funny stories. He, I don't see a sense of humor in our current president. I mean, it's a really no. missing element. But I mean, there's Well, a he got the UN laughing with him. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> With, we're with me. But I, I think <laughs> what, 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 if Lincoln were here today, what he would be talking about is how to reconcile these different parts of the country. We can't let it be that other people are different from us and we don't care about what they're thinking and feeling. We have to remember that a majority of the people want an inclusive country. They want immigration. They yeah. want Medicare. They want aid to education. They want mobility. They want the lack of inequities to be dealt with. A healthy and, planet? And they care about a healthy planet very yeah, much so. Yeah. They yeah, want it, absolutely. And, 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 and if those people, if those people who want those things go out and vote, you're so right, power begets power. There's right. an expand... President Trump has not expanded his base. It's still in the 30%. So we don't have to be so upset about this if we can do something about it. Look, more people are running for office now. The young people are excited. More women than ever before. Take heart in that and get them to the polls. Get them to the polls. <laughs> them to the polls. Let's we'll see. Uh, Jeff, should the government be doing more to ensure that kids facing hunger are able to get access to food? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, this is, you know, where uh, government can uh, really... Um... You know, lend a hand. Now, I've had, I've been working with on the hunger issue for you know, over 30 years. I know now, you have, yeah. And I've had uh, wonderful success by not going up the up against the feds. You know, I've done a lot of lobbying there. Uh, but working with the governors, they seem to be, you know, a lot more into the people. They're where a the lot people of, are. Yeah. A lot of these lives. governors don't know that there's a, a billion dollars of federal funding that's there on their table uh, if they have programs in place to, uh, you know, well, feed just, hungry it, kids. But if they don't have those programs in place, then that... Well, it's the same thing with out. Medicaid expansion. They've got lots of money on the table from the federal government in Obamacare. The Republican governors chose not to use that money. Yeah. Why? Again, liberal tears, because it was not costing them anything. What, what's, what feels odd to me, too, because I consider myself a Democrat, but it's kind of a... Isn't that a conservative feeling to go more local rather than yeah. looking at the of big course. government? And that's what I bring up about uh, sure. your environment. Rather than waiting for those guys... I mean, you definitely got to do your voting, for sure, but engage in another kind of way. You know, this, we have another whole powerful way of engaging in all of these issues, you know, to take it kind of personally. Absolutely. Don't say, oh, I'm going to vote for the guy, and then, you know, you made your vote, now I can, I don't have to feel guilty. I've made my, you, you can engage more than... You know, he's so than... right. I mean, all the changes in our society have come when it percolates from the anti-slavery movement, the women's movement, the civil rights movement, the progressive movement. It's the citizens That's that make right. it, and then the leaders channel with it. You were talking before about government versus leaders. We can't be waiting for the leaders. We have to That's take right. the responsibility ourselves. We are the citizens of this country. <laughs> You know, I, uh, I begin, I don't know if you guys uh, Google surf, you know, I was Google surfing in the morning and I saw this woman who said something really interesting because um, it seems to me that passion is what we're looking for. We're looking for people to be passionate about the environment. And she made something really an interesting observation. She said, passion is the flame that comes from rubbing some sticks together. You got to get in there and get into it and chew it up a the little bit. The trouble is, we have we have plenty of passion right now, but it's the wrong kind of passion. Right. It's yeah. a passionate and intense hatred. Well, it's the, of it's the, the other a, country. A, a, and a, I'm, yeah. I, I just, I mean, I wish I could be as hopeful as you, Doris. But when you when you look at the rhetoric right now, it seems very similar to me to the rhetoric of the 1850s and 18, early 1860s, in which people are talking about the other part of the country as if it were another country. Um, when people are yeah. saying we would prefer to be run by a foreign agent in right. Moscow than we would by a Democrat, yes. we are at a point where the discourse has curdled to such an extent that it can lead, especially now, right. again, 
if, if the illegitimacy of this system continues, like you were talking about the popular vote issue and the electoral college issue, p uh, presidents elected, gerrymandering, if this continues, we could have a real legitimacy crisis in this country where people will actually turn to violence. And you can see it beginning. You can see it, people wanting to vent this anger in the sense of, in the streets, or by going up against people in the elevators or in restaurants, you can the see it beginning to get into need, the streets. We need targets. We need, blow we need targets. Up very quickly. We need to have a constitutional amendment to end Citizens United. We have to overturn yes, that. Right. We need to have nonpartisan commissions. There's, there's a move in some states now, in some local states. But every time you do that, you trigger the other tribes to even greater and greater levels of passion. That's the problem. Well, then but, we have to have the passion that's equal to that. Yeah, I don't think, you know, I, 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 I feel like. <laughs> my, my, uh, you mentioned Bucky Fuller. Another thing that he said that really makes a lot of sense as far as what we're talking about. He says, when you want to change something, you don't have to go right up against it. He says, come up with something that makes what you're trying to change obsolete. You know, don't you know, spend all this energy and this anger. That anger, could, you can, we, can, we can shift that and get involved with how we see it. We have to talk to each other. I mean, I think... That's right. Uh, That's, the, yeah. the lack of communication. I mean, when I was saying earlier, and, and, and Soledad, you thought it was absurd, I think when I look at the media in a certain way, because I'm still basically right of center, I see and hear things that you may not see and hear. And when I say that I'm hearing those things, it's useful for you to say, I hear you, as opposed to it's absurd. It yes, didn't happen. Absolutely. Oh, what is and this, marriage counseling? No, no, no. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you, Andrew. No, we're married. It's not, okay. This country is a right. group okay. of okay. Okay. No, no, you know what? That's I, right. I, 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 we're married. It's like a marriage. You know, I read an interesting thing. I think it was from our sometimes friend, Glenn Greenwald, uh, yeah. who was <laughs> saying that, uh, like on MSNBC, they get ratings every segment. Okay. By the minute. You get by them by the, the minute. No. Yes, they're called the, the minutes. You get them okay. broken down so by the it, minutes. So you can follow so where you lose your voter. Your right. Viewers. Okay. So who on MSNBC is ever going to risk their show right. by saying something that doesn't exactly align with what the audience already wants right. to hear and think? So that's kind of a hermetically sealed yeah. bubble, too. It's just one with a lot more facts where they're okay. usually on the right side of issues, but not the whole time. No, and sometimes you and get into this framework, for example, as I was starting to say about race or gender, that right. it's really upsetting a lot of other people in the country who are hearing this who you don't, you, if you and wouldn't say that to their face. But I, can, I can be agreeing with them and go, oh, for fuck's sake, and turn it off. Really. I, I can't. The... Because everything is like, what do you think? Chris, you're so right. <laughs> it's like, what a surprise. The other How thing about... is, <laughs> we're all commu communicating online and on screens, and that's a very different experience when you're talking to someone and looking at their eyes and their face and their body language, okay. and where you actually do have to accommodate them a little bit. David Jolly, are you going to follow other principled conservatives and vote Democratic in the midterm? Ooh, hot seat for you, David Jolly. No, so look, I, I love that question because I came out in <laughs> October of last year and said I think Democrats should take the House. Right. I think we'll be safer in a divided government. <clears throat> but, but Bill, it, it builds on everything we've talked about. Barack Obama talked about a post-partisan America, but he tried to do it through a two-party system. Uh, I left the party about five weeks ago. Mm. My wife and I both did. Because I don't think the future is between the two parties. And, and, yeah. and I'll, I'll tell you the inflection point. We're expecting our first child. And among adults, we can have this Republican on Republican hey. side. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your sperm went in a lady. Hey, hey, look at that. It always gets a blow. I, I made a baby. I made a baby. No, look, it, 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 it focuses your perspective. And what I would say it, is I'm this. I'm sure it does. Uh, among adults, we can have this Republican on Republican fight. Nearly three years ago, I stood on the House floor as a sitting Republican member of Congress and called on Donald Trump to drop out of the presidential race. And I have never lost my voice. I have never gone silent, right. as all of my Republican colleagues and have withered. it's got to be tough, because, I mean, you know, people are it's in a party their tough. whole life. Your parents are probably Republicans. Yeah, it, look, it's incredibly it, tough, but here's, here's what I will tell you. I, I hope our daughter learns two things from our example. The first is, for three years, we fought a fight for something we truly believed in that the Republicans could answer to better angels. But the other lesson I hope our daughter learns is this. There are fights that at times wiser men and women walk away from. And this is a fight. Sometimes you got to start over. Somebody else can fight yeah. for the dignity of the Republican Party it's, now. There it's is not no. my fight there's, anymore. There's two parties, the Democrats and the traitors. And it's not a, it's not a big issue to me. You know how, you know. I, I often read that Paul Ryan quote where he's, that they got him on tape 
behind closed doors saying, I think it's somebody else says, uh, you know, there's two Republicans who are, I think are on Putin's it's payroll. Kevin McCarthy. Kevin right. McCarthy. So there's the two Republicans the on okay. Putin's payroll, Rohrbacher. Trump and Rohrbacher. And Paul Ryan doesn't go, oh, my God, let's go to the FBI. He goes, okay, uh, that doesn't leave Family the room, conversation. Right? That's how we know we're... Fa I mean, that's not treason. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Soledad, I had a question for you. Well, I don't understand. Why, why don't they use their yeah. power? Like, like um, Jeff Flake is actually one of the most powerful people on Earth. He's a politician, right? Right. Those, job. Those three he needs a job. And a retiring one. He, What's he, he got to job. lose? He, what is he? he needs a job, right? What? And now he's going to have a nice, cushy Republican job I guess somewhere. So. Can I say but something? But he could have a nice job like this. Look, listen. <laughs> Isn't this more fun being with us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, look, it really is. When people it's more get fun. We're funnier. We, you when, get, you know. when people get mad at me for doing TV, I say, hey, call your congressman. I can't <laughs> help you. <laughs> but, but here's what I will tell you, and this is something, look, and, and, as we have these academic and intelligent conversations, Conversations about why, 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 why. At some point, we get to judge the leadership integrity and the moral fiber of our political leaders, and we get to say, you made a wrong decision and you need right. to leave. And that's where we are right now in the moment of America. Okay. Final question, Soledad O'Brien. If or when Roe v. Wade is overturned, how should progressives respond? Ooh. When? Uh, with protection. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I By think, wearing a lot of protection. I think one I would... of the saddest things is to um, hear Senator Collins talk about that as a non-issue when you listen to her very long and tortured delivery of her speech today um, to talk about, you know, I'm not worried about Roe v. Wade. And I think there are lots of people who are worried about Roe v. Wade. I think she's very wrong on that issue. Oh. I don't know. I don't know, what the, I don't know what the solution to that is, but, you know, hopefully it'll motivate people to get to the polls. Can I, can I suggest something, Barry, that, yeah. that liberals would actually be better off if Roe versus Wade disappeared? Because then they would actually have to vote, go to the people and ask for democratic majorities. And in fact, there are democratic well, majorities in most Western countries you know, that's for easy legal for you. You're not going to get anybody pressed. <laughs> sure. <laughs> How do you Jeez. know that? <laughs> yeah. oh <my> <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, we all know that. All right, thank you, everybody. Let's, uh, let's end it right there.